All right, hey, welcome to the Daily Drawing. Today we're going to be drawing a chickadee. This is actually my favorite bird of like all time next to the red-tailed hawk. They're super, 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 super cute. And I just really wanted to draw something that like I really like today. So um, the first thing we're going to start with is we're going to start with the body. These are super simple and pretty easy to draw. We're going to start with just kind of like a little chubby circle. I love these birds because they're like so small and round and they like they're so pretty and like I love their songs and they're so cool. All right. So now that we have the round body, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the head. Now the head and the neck are kind of combined together here and we only have a tiny bit of neck separating the head from the body. And uh, the head actually uh, kind of overlaps into the body a little bit on the bottom base part. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to draw kind of like a, a gumdrop shape on the top or like an exaggerated frowny face on the top. If it helps, you can fully draw a circle. That way it makes it easier to draw that shape. So it's up to you. So I'm gonna start right about here on the top corner of the body. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the frown. I'm gonna start curving it down until I get to about this side of the body. Now, once again, if it is easier, you can complete that circle. Just make sure that it feels natural to you, but then uh, you just erase this because we don't really need that part. All right, so now that we have the curve of the head and we have the kind of circly shape for the body, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and focus on the face and then I'll move on to the wing and the tail and all that fun stuff. All right, so if I look at the chickadee's face, we have the uh, curve that makes up the back of the head. And then we have right here, there's a slight indent where we have the brow area. The beak pokes out really tiny, cute and small. And then we have the rest of the head continuing on. So we can leave this part just as is because this is just the curve of the forehead. Once you get um, a little less than halfway down for the uh, beak area, what you're gonna do is you're going to start with drawing a very small frown coming out of the face like this. And then what you would do is you would draw a very subtle smile. It's almost a flat line for the inner beak. It just goes kind of straight across. There is a slight smile to it, but not too exaggerated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the tip of the beak. I'm just going to do that slight smiling straight line. I want to go just a tiny bit into the head. I don't want it to go too far in because they do have such small beaks. All right. Once I've gotten that just a tiny bit past the line that makes up the head, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that lower beak. As you can see here, it kind of starts close to the tip and then it's just a very small smile. It's a lot thinner than the upper beak, so be careful of not making it too thick. So I'm going to start on the bottom. I'm just going to draw a slight smile. I'm going to stop whenever I touch the head like this, and then I'll make up my uh, chickadee's beak. Something that you can do pretty uh, easily to draw like the shape of the inner beak is just draw a smile connecting the upper beak with the center of the beak, and then draw a slight frown to connect the center of the beak with the lower beak. And that will help separate the feathers from the beak area, especially since they're kind of like super fluffy. We don't really see the uh, beak going up and like getting all in this area or anything. All right, now that I have my uh, forehead area, I have my beak. Now I just have my neck area. Now on this one right here, what I do want to do, if you'll notice right here after the neck curves down, the uh, kind of like torso kind of sticks out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of uh, change the shape here. Once I get close to the body, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a slight parenthesis to kind of make the body stick out a little bit more. So um, notice that it's a little bit more than halfway down the neck area. And I'm just adding a parenthesis to connect the neck to the body here. Now, depending on how you originally drew your circle and your head and all that, that might not be as necessary, but on mine, I do see that I need to do that. And notice I just erase the uh, extra piece so that it makes it flow just a little bit more naturally. Okay, so now that we have our head drawn the shape of, and we have the uh, little torso area, I'm, before I move on to the body, I'm going to go ahead and draw the uh, eye area. So if I look at the in-between of the beak, going across, I can see that there's like a little diagonal line that almost makes up the like head part of its uh, fur feather, feather pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very lightly draw kind of like a little bit of a straightish diagonal line going across from the top of the beak to the back of the head. And then my eye location is going to be close to the beak, but not like super close. So this right here, it's a little hard to see because it's a black eye. It's right there and it's um, a little bit away from the beak, but it's not quite in the center of the head. It's a little bit closer to the front than the center. So I'm gonna find my location. So somewhere around here to where it's not exactly splitting the head in half. It's a little bit closer to the forehead area. I'm going to draw just a simple circle and keeping it fairly small. They don't have very big eyes like owls or anything. They're pretty tiny eyes, which I think just adds to the cuteness. And then if we 
excuse me, I have hiccups again. Um, as always, just leave like a little highlight and then you can fill in the rest of it. Like this. So now we have a little bitty chickity eye. <laughs> They're so cute. All right. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and draw just a slight kind of uh, wiggly line going back and forth about halfway into the eye. I'm going to wiggle that to the back of the head. That way I know that this right here is going to be the black of the forehead area. Um, some birds have very distinctive markings that like most of them are going to have almost the exact same marking, which makes them pretty easily identifiable. Uh, some birds will have a slight variation, but chickadees are very distinctive that they have this kind of like helmet of black here. And they also have like a beard of black. So what I'm going to do for the beard part, I'm going to start at the corner of the mouth. I'm going to do a slight little wiggly line curving down and almost like a frown until it touches that line that made up the body. And then this whole area right here would be like the black beard part, which of course this is art. You don't have to have it black or anything. You could have like a pink chickadee if you want. That'd be totally cool. All right, now that I have the head done and I have my markings kind of marked out, if you have any extra lines, by the way, feel free to erase those so they're not in your way. Um, Do I see a hole for the beak nose? I don't see a hole, but there's probably one. If you wanted to add like a little dashy line for the hole close to the face, you can, but you don't have to because it's not necessarily in the picture. It just might be really tiny. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and move on to the wings. If you'll notice on the wings here, they make a gigantic teardrop that curves up. This is the back of the body for the wing. And then this right here, this actually, this is one wing here and this is a second wing over here. So we actually have two wings kind of overlapping each other. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna draw the shape of this inner wing and then I'm gonna draw the shape of the outer wing right here. So to start with, I noticed that the wing is starting right here below the neck area not quite touching the outer part, but getting pretty close to it. I'm gonna draw just a parenthesis like this to indicate the shoulder of the wing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a frown going back like this very lightly. And then I'm going to go outside of the body just a tiny bit, you don't go too far, but just a little bit. And then I'm gonna curve it back. This is gonna be that really big long teardrop shape that's making up that wing. All right, you can erase the inside of the body right here. And then um, what I would do first, okay, so this is just the generic shape. We're going to go in and add feathers. But if you'll notice, the feathers on the other wing, on the other side of the body, are the ones that are overlapping this wing. So I would suggest, as always, draw the thing that's closest to you first or the thing that's in front before you draw the thing that's in back. So we're going to start off with these feathers right here. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw loosely the shape that makes up these uh, feather clump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the back of the body, not right here where the neck is. Leave a little bit of a back space. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a parenthesis that's going to overlap just slightly the wing like this. And then we're going to make it frown back to here. So it's kind of like we're drawing a smaller teardrop on this side. Okay. All right. When you're done with that, erase the inside here. And now we're not going to make this be perfectly lined up with this edge. So I would very lightly erase it so that you can just barely see it. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add the feather shapes. For the feather shapes, all we're going to do is we're just going to draw little smiles. So here's the first smile that makes it this tiny feather here. And then I see that we have a much, much bigger feather. That's kind of like a smile going all the way up for this one. And then we have a massive feather here. So a bigger smile going back up. And notice, okay, so see how we have these indentions here? That's why I suggest erase that line lightly so that you don't have that line blocking your way or anything. And then I have two more here. I have one here and one here. So this one is going to be a little bit smaller. And then this one kind of goes out to the edge like this. So very important to keep these kind of like almost like curves at the bottom so that they feel like they're feathers. And then if you like extra detail, you can add like the little details that make up the inside of the feathers. But that's not necessarily necessary <laughs> unless you just want to. All right, now for the next part, I'm going to do this row of feathers. Now, this, all these like really little thin, hairy looking things, those are the like really, really tiny feathers that make up the top half of the wing. And then these are those really long feathers that they use for their flight. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to separate this chunk of feathers from this small chunk of feathers. So to do that, I'm going to start on this wing here. I'm going to do a frown to connect it to the other side. So starting somewhere around here on the wing, we're just going to frown it. After we finish with the frown, then what we're going to do is we're going to draw the shape of the feathers. I would suggest start with the inner feathers and then slowly work your way out to the outer feathers. So for the first three inner feathers, what we're going to do is we're going to start on this feather here. We're just going to do a little bit of a slight smile and then stop whenever you hit close to that line. Once you, It doesn't have to be perfect. You can go in or out a little bit, but you want to get close to that line. And then we're going to drop down quite a ways 
like this. Do another smile and then get really close to the same spot that you connected this. So notice that this is a wider gap than this is right here. That just helps with the spacing of the feathers. All right, move down. We're going to do that one more time down here. So move down quite a ways down. So here I'm on that like a uh, fourth or third feather, third feather gap. I'm going to do another smile. My goal is to meet really close back up here to this one. So if it helps, you can put a marker dot to keep your uh, kind of like idea of what direction you're going. And then after I connect that, then the rest of these are pretty close together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add, just as a texture, I'm just going to add a bunch of smiles that are really close together like this. Just give it that texture of that wing. And you can draw these a little bit darker so you don't have to like go back in on it later. But that's kind of up to you with how you personally want to do your drawing. So just adding a bunch of smiles. And they don't have to be the same number of smiles as me. I'm just trying to get that texture of longer feathers there. So don't worry about counting the number or anything. All right, so in order to get those really, really small kind of downy feathers that are up here, what I would suggest doing is doing kind of like the uh, C texture where you're kind of like drawing like uh, the letter C over and over, or you're drawing a parenthesis over and over, just to give you that texture. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do some C's facing one way, some C's facing the other way. So here I have them facing towards the left or right or whatever, and here I have them switching to the opposite way. And I'm just doing like maybe like two or three in one direction then switching it back and forth. So I'm going to do that kind of along the edge of these feathers. So I'm going to add some C's facing one direction, C's facing the other direction, just to give you that really, really tiny, soft, feathery down that makes up this particular part of the wing. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that same texture up here where the neck meets the body, just so that I know that I have that texture there. Now, if you're going for a cartoony aesthetic, you can leave it just like this. If you want to look a little bit more realistic, feel free to add a couple more downy feathers on the inside of the uh, kind of like upper torso area as well, just so that you know that that whole area is really, really soft and fluffy. And um, don't, f don't feel like you have to fill in like the entire thing, but I mean, if you want to go for it, it just makes it look super fluffy. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So here's my fluffy feathers, here's my wings. So if you guys don't know like uh, bird wings, like typically you have like different sections like this, and then you have like smaller feathers medium feathers and kind of longer feathers. What's happening is whenever they fold them up like this, this kind of like gets completely folded in half and this kind of folds on top of the other part. So it's like scrunching up. So that's why you only see like this part right here would be this part of the wing. And then this part down here would be like this part of the wing. So we're only seeing that part, which is how it gets that shape that you're seeing. We don't really see any of this because it's tucked up underneath it. So that's why the wings look the way that they do. All right, moving on, here we go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the tail. In this particular case, the bird is at rest, so the tail is kind of going backwards. So we can see that it starts on the edge of that long wing. It makes a frown, sort of, a very slight frown, not too exaggerated. And then we're gonna have the same kind of thing happening over here. So to do that, I'm gonna start on my long wing. I'm gonna do a slight frown. Now the length of this tail is um, uh, kind of similar to the same length as the long feather. So if you measure these long feathers here, that's how long the tail should be about. So once you get that measurement, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very lightly just draw a simple smile, very lightly, because I'm gonna change that, and then just do another slight frown going back to the body, like this. All right, so once we have our two frowns and then we got our slight smile here, then what I wanna do is I wanna start drawing my feathers. So if I look at this, I can see that I can see one major feather on top that makes a full smile, and I see some half smiles here, and I see lots and lots of half smiles here. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start with in about the center, not perfectly in the center, I'm going to start with just a really big, long, exaggerated smile like this to where I have a nice curve at the tip. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the tip of the tail like this. And then I'm just going to add a parenthesis and then curve it up and then just keep doing that until I reach the edge. So I can only fit two here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I just want to start, the key thing is start on this one, do the smile and then just bring it back up and then start on the one that you just did do a smile, bring it back up, and then keep going until you get about where you think that the tail is now full and fluff. Okay, so we do have a little bit of the uh, lower tail here that we can kind of see that little floof floof. That's just the uh, kind of more of the where the muscle of the tail is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple floofy floofs right here to show you that that was where they have the actual kind of like down feathers that go under the tail and help it kind of like move and fluff out and curl. All right, so we're almost there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and draw, before we do the feet, we're gonna go ahead and draw the uh, bottom of the body floof. So if you'll notice that the feathers get, they're still very thin and smooth and fluffy, but they're uh, a lot more clumped up and look a little bit uh, longer. 
hiccups, sorry. <laughs> All right, so to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by drawing kind of like the same thing that we did up here where we're doing like little C's and C's like this. Or if you want to, you can also do the Z line where we do like a zigzag back and forth, whichever one you think would feel better. Pick whichever one you like or come up with your own. All right, so I'm gonna start with just a little bit of the C fluffs right here. I'm gonna switch it to more of a Z line just because those feathers do get longer. And then I'm gonna go back to kind of doing some more C shapes, just randomly. That way your goal is to make the bottom part of the body look fluffy, because that's something pretty distinctive of chickadees that they're just like big floofs, which are super cute. Anyway, all right, so now that I have my floofs, if you, and it, uh, once again, if you wanna go for a cartoon aesthetic, leave it just kind of similar to this, but if you want to uh, do it slightly more realistic, feel free to add a couple more floofs on the inside. Don't go too crazy unless you just really want to. <laughs> and then, um, uh, all right, see. So now that I have my floofs on the inside of the body, I am ready to do my feet. What I would say is because the bird is grabbing onto a branch, it really helps if you draw what they're standing on first and then draw their feet uh, because it helps you figure out the placement. Otherwise, you're going to have like awkward feet dangling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the branch. I'm just going to draw about where I see it. So it looks like it's coming right here, intersecting the tail. It's going to go under the tail and then it's just going to curve off. And you can draw the branch in any direction you want. Um, it doesn't even have to be a branch. It can be like a wire on a fence or something. Anything that you want it to be, just uh, let it be that thing. Or you can even have it standing on someone's finger. That'd be like super cool. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So now that I have my branch shape, and all I did is I just drew a line. I drew a parallel-ish line, making it somewhat wonky. And then I added a little bit of a V here to show that the branch is separating out into a different part. You can even add like leaves and like uh, flowers and stuff to it. So you can add some more decoration and stuff to it. That's kind of up to you, but that's optional. All right, back to the bird. All right, so here we can see that the feet are holding on to the branch. Um, they have some toes in the front, so they have toes in the back. I only see this toe in the back with the claw holding onto the branch. I don't see the other toes because they're overlapped by the branch. Same thing on this one. I only see one of the claws and the other ones are being overlapped. So it's going to be a little awkward when we're drawing it, but just trust the picture and then you can go for it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I need to start my first leg. If I look at this leg and I go up, it's about halfway into the uh, big wing right here. And it's kind of starting right there on the edge of that wing in the back. So if I go to the edge of the wing of the back right here and I go down, that should be where my leg's gonna come out of, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a small diagonal line like this until it gets close to touching the branch. Leave a little bit of a gap though because we gotta save some space for the foot itself. All right, once we get close to the branch, what we're gonna do is we're going to frown it down so that it goes behind the branch like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw a parallel line really close because they got some really thin legs. They're songbirds, so they're really small. All right. Once I go down with my parallel line until it gets across from where I just did my big curve, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an opposite curve facing this direction like this. And then don't quite touch the outer branch, though. Get close, but don't quite touch it because now what we're going to do is we're going to do the toe. So the toe is just very round. So I'm going to do like a little smile. And then I'm not gonna quite touch the inside of the foot though. So just a little smile. Don't worry, we're gonna come back and do the claw in a minute. After we do the little smile for the toe, then I'm just gonna frown it until it gets a tiny bit above the branch. And then I'm just gonna come back down. So that this right here is gonna be where the other toes are. I don't really see them fully because they're being overlapped, but I do see like a little bit of a sky space here. And then I see that this right here is the foot. Now to finish it off, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a frowny face and then draw a parallel line and that's gonna make up your claw. So now this is the way that the picture has it because it's gripping onto it. If you're like, uh, I still don't want the foot to like that. I want it to feel a little bit more like I can see the foot. Some things that you can edit, it may not be like anatomically correct, but if it really bothers you and you wanna edit it, you can. All you do is you just draw it kind of slightly more out and then maybe like, uh, let you see a toe like this and then draw a claw. And then maybe you see like the little bump of the other toe and then you see a little claw. You might have to kind of edit the branch in order to fit it better so that it makes it make more sense. But if you are wanting to have a little bit more of a foot looking foot, you can feel free to draw like uh, one toe and then don't fully draw this one though. Otherwise it's going to make the bird's foot look like it's twisted, which would be a little awkward. All right. Okay. So you can keep it the first way or if that first way doesn't look right to you and you want to fix it. This is another way to kind of edit it a little bit. All right, so now the other foot is really hard to see. It's in the shadow. We barely see any of it. We just see like the back of that claw right there. So to draw that, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop. I can kind of see the two toes actually. So I'm going to draw a little bit of a flat line first coming out from the tail. And then I'm going to drop it down, draw a toe like this. Go ahead and draw a claw. 
so I can see that it's gripping and then bring it back up to the front like this. So I only see that one dew claw and then I wouldn't be able to see any of the other claw stuff because it's all underneath the bird's body. And then I'm just gonna personally shade these in just because they have really dark little feet that are super cute. <laughs> and that way I know that that is for a fact, the uh, feet down there and not like some random stray feathers or anything. All right, so now that I have my bird's feet and I have my bird's body, the rest of it's just uh, up to like uh, you how much detail that you wanna put in it. I'm gonna put a little bit more detail onto the face personally. If you want to leave it like this though, that is a great bird that you can leave it at. Uh, something that I am gonna change a little bit about the face because I want it to look a little bit more realistic because I'm gonna make this line a little bit more uh, cattywampus, adding a little bit more um, unevenness to it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever watched previous videos, but um, the more uneven you make things and the more like random you make it, the more realistic it's gonna feel. Here I'm adding a couple tufts above the beak just to give it a little bit more uh, feathery texture and below the beak as well, just to give a little bit more uh, texture, make it feel more natural. Same thing with the back of the head. I'm adding a little bit more of a wiggle here and adding a little bit of uh, feather tufts by drawing like a zigzag line above it. And uh, you don't have to do this all over the entire face, but um, I'm gonna add a couple more just around on the inside of the head here, just to give it a little bit more texture because I felt like the head was too smooth and uh, that just kind of sort of wasn't really what I was wanting to go for for the bird. All right, so now I think I am very satisfied with the textures. The only thing that I would personally do after this is just adding a little bit of shading to it, especially to uh, emphasize the different color values that are on the bird's face and stuff. And on its body. So at this point, if you don't want to shade it and you want to color it instead, definitely feel free to because coloring it would be super cool, especially if you picked like weird colors to color it. That would look pretty interesting. So um, once again, I'm just holding my pencil kind of sideways and then letting the side of the lead do a lot of the shading. That way it looks very smooth and very flat and it's also a little bit easier to control the color that my pencil shades in. So if you are working on shading, if you're trying out different techniques, holding it sideways is a really great technique. All right, so now that I have the color values down, I'm just gonna go back and very lightly shade in different parts of the body just to help separate out the different parts so that it makes it easier to tell what part of the bird we're looking at. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading here and here. All right, I'm gonna shade the branch and then I think that will be done. All right, so I hope you guys had fun drawing my favorite bird. <laughs> they're super cute and they have a cool name. And like, if you ever, uh, they're really common in the area that I live in. So if you ever go outside and you see one of these birds, just know that they're awesome birds and I love them. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.